To the events extracted signal from the noise. We are here live in Barcelona, Spain. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co host for the next three days, Dave Vellante, co founder of Wikibon.org. And we are pleased and excited to be uh, covering for the, I think, fourth year now, Dave, uh, HP Discover, uh, both in the US and in Europe, uh, Frankfurt, Germany last year, and obviously in the US and Las Vegas. Um, and uh, we, again, all the action in Europe here live for HP Discover. I'm here with Dave Vellante. I'm John Furrier. Again, Dave, a continuation of our programming where we go out to the events, extract the, extract the signal from the noise. HP, our turnaround documentation of the company that is a great, huge player in the enterprise space, uh, obviously historic in its size, like IBM and big, but you know, having some, some uh, troubles over the past few years, certainly we've commentated on that, but surprisingly, HP is making a turn. We're seeing Meg Whitman at the helm, yet to come on theCUBE, and we've got multiple invitations to her. She is yet to come on theCUBE, and we'll, we'll keep on asking her to sit down with us. But, uh, but you're seeing some financial engineering going on. You're seeing some, some, some light at the end of the tunnel, uh, mid-innings, if you will, from the five-year turnaround. We are documenting deep inside HP, both at the top executive level as well as into the trenches, uh, the full documentation of the, of the five-year turnaround now by Meg Whitman. Uh, Dave, I got to ask you, uh, 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 your thoughts on HP Discover. Clearly we're seeing cloud and big data at the centerpiece of this and a lot of other things under the hood. What's your take so far here to kick off HP Discover? Well, thank you, John. It's good to be with you again here. So the HP Discover vibe, you know, cosmetically is very similar to what you, you see if, for those of you who are in Las Vegas. Uh, the branding, the, the booth setups, and, and the like. Very spacious uh, uh, setup, a, a, a lot of activity going on at the booths. And the U.S. Uh, show is actually a bit smaller. The European uh, event is larger. I don't know what the actual numbers are, but I'm, I'm guessing it's north of 10,000 here. Uh, and the U.S. sort of hovers between eight and 9,000 typically. So there's more customers here. Uh, there's good vibe, strong vibe. HP always has a big presence in, in Europe. I think turning to HP, John, HP now is a $112 billion company with uh, about a $53 billion market cap. So it's still way underperforming where it should be. I mean, a company like HP should, should be having at least 1x revenue from a valuation standpoint. Ideally, I'd like to see 1.1, 1.2. We're talking about 50 cents on the revenue dollar is what HP's trading at, but it's pumped. It's bumped up from that, it was actually w worse. HP got itself into a big mess several years ago, and Meg Whitman has been engineering a turnaround. She talks about a five-year turnaround. We're through year two of that turnaround. Last year was HP's fix and rebuild year, John, and essentially what they were doing is really trying to focus on a couple of things. Improve their operating efficiency, generate some free cash flow, and pay down their, their debt. Some real serious X and O type activities from the, from the balance sheet standpoint. They generated $9 billion in free cash flow last year. They've been paying down their debt. HP now is in a position to do you know, what guys like Joe Tucci call tuck-in acquisitions, smaller acquisitions that are more strategic in nature, much more like what we saw with Vertica, certainly not what, what, in terms of what we saw with Autonomy. So smaller acquisitions that can help HP get back to growth. The other thing I want to say is it, we've said a number of times here on theCUBE, HP has to shrink before it can grow, and that's exactly what's happening. The company is, is slowly shrinking, major parts of its, 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 its business units are, are the pieces of it are growing, but the declining pieces are, are declining more rapidly than the growing pieces. As a result, the company is shrinking. It was $120 billion. Now it's down to $112 billion. John, my prediction is that decline is going to continue for the next couple of years before HP can really start to reverse that decline and start the growth engine again. 
Yeah, Dave, it's exciting. We are here in Europe live at uh, Barcelona, Spain, obviously for the HP Discover Conference, the most important event happening in the world this week. We are also covering two other events happening simultaneous to the HP event here. That is Le Web event in Paris, France. We're covering that as well. As well as back in the US, we're covering Gartner Data Center Conference. So we have our eyes and ears to the ground for Le Web in Paris, which really is not as important as HP Discover because there's more action going on here in terms of what it really means from a dollar standpoint. But Le a web is important, Dave, because it talks about the future of the web app market. You know, the web 2.0 market, guys in the software, kind of like in the consumer marketing area. It kind of is, is a, a tea-leaving exercise around looking at what's, what's trending in the, you know, what I call the hipster programming market. So lay web is really kind of not as important as, say, HP Discover. Uh, and moreover, I think one event we wish we could be at, unfortunately we, we, don't, we don't have the ability to bring the cube to, that is the Gartner Data Center Conference, which is an, a very important event because Gartner's top uh, coverage around the data center is being documented this week. We're certainly going to be covering that. We're doing a crowd chat at seven o'clock here in Europe time, um, which will be going simultaneous in the US around Gardner, and here's what's happening. You've got the data center around the Gardner Symposium happening, which is really critical around the future of the data center, which is about cloud, mobile, big data applications, and you've got HP Discover on a financial turnaround, Dave, where they are about to make their product move. Not yet impressive in my mind on the product side, certainly more impressive on the financial side, was as they straighten out their, their, their kingdom, if you will, get the numbers right, get all the finances in order. They're a huge battleship that's turning very slowly, throwing off a really big wake. Obviously the financial performance is really important with that. So again, exciting week for theCUBE uh, and our team at SiliconANGLE and Wikibon. We're covering HP Discover here live, Gartner Symposium, Gartner Data Center uh, Conference in the US, and Lay Web in Paris. So we're going to have all that coverage. Keep watching us here. So, so, so Dave, Dave, given that, a lot of activity going on, let's talk about HP. Meg Whitman just announced on her earnings call about the, uh, the turnaround. You saw a dividend, you see the share buyback, you're seeing the cleaning of the house, if you will, of cleaning up kind of the first room that needs to be kind of rearranged is the financial performance of the company, which obviously is driving everything. It's clear to me that Meg Whitman is, have her 100% has her attention focused on the financial performance. So I want to get your take on that. One, your analysis of the financial uh, performance, and two, you know, they're not showing excellent numbers on growth. I mean, are they doing it right? I mean, certainly having better numbers is, is a nice sign of health, but you know, are they reporting their, their, their business properly? I, I got to ask you, because you look at Amazon, has a profit, profitless business in AWS, yet they don't report the earnings the way they do. They, they package their growth business. I want to get your take on that. Do you think HP is packaging up their financial performance properly? Do you think that's a work area of improvement? Or you think they're okay? I mean, I'm not showing any growth in any of their business units. What's your take on that? Well, I think you're right. I mean, I think, uh, again, this year was one of generating free cash flow and paying down debt. They still got, I think, uh, roughly $16 billion in long-term debt and $12 billion in cash. You'd like to see that ratio reverse a little bit. But to your point about how HP reports, it's got one of its business units that it reports on at the top level that is actually growing, and that's the, the enterprise group, which actually had been struggling because of some of the difficulties within ISS. It's growing about 1.8%, that's the enterprise group, and it's the only group within HP that HP reports at a, at a high level that's growing. Now, it's got pockets of growth, in, in for instance, the converged uh, infrastructure group is growing at 40 plus percent. So what I would like to see, John, is HP, just exactly to your point, I would like to see HP package the way it reports differently because when you tick through, uh, printing and, and, and personal systems is half the business, you know, that's declining at 1.2 percent. I told you the enterprise group's grown at 1.8 percent. Enterprise services down 9 percent. Software down 9 percent. HP financial services down 5.5 percent. What I would like to see, which you alluded to, is package that differently. Show me, do what IBM does, do what EMC does, and, and package up cloud, uh, converged systems, all the high growth stuff, and track that so that I can see the progress of those areas where HP is actually shifting its business. And, and so I think that it needs a different prism, and who knows, maybe it even needs a different organization. I don't think it does. What should they do? So what I would do if I were HP, I would, I would reorganize the, 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 the reporting structure and the structure underneath to demonstrate those growth areas around cloud, around big data, uh, and around converged infrastructure. Those are really the three big areas that I would focus on. And then obviously, they got to figure out mobile uh, because that's the only way in which that PC line is going to grow. Now John, this is really your wheelhouse, right? When you think about the, the mobile space, you've been very outspoken that HP should not 
spin out or sell its PC business. And the reason why you've said that is it's a distribution channel for the future, future mobile business. What are your thoughts on what HP should do? Um, well, relative, first of all, I, I think your assessment is right on the money on the financial. I think they need to package up in how they report their business to Wall Street. You know, they're serving two customers. HP, in my mind, serves two customers. They serve Wall Street and they serve their enterprise and their, their customer base. They have two sets of customers, people who buy their products and Wall Street who buys the financial results. It's that simple. Meg is clearly, to your point, working on one, and I think your advice is probably what she's going to do. I mean, if not, Meg Whitman, should, you should listen to Dave Vellante. I think he's got a good point there. On the product side, I think a different, different spin on it. One is, I think that uh, HP needs to be relevant. And I think the first thing that they have to do is identify the markets that they want to be disrupting in and growing in. Right now, if you look under the hood of HP, I'm looking at the signage around me, storage virtualization and databases, software-defined storage and entry uh, data centers, flex network, I mean, they have, uh, and the enterprise group, really, really good product offerings. Nice, sustainable business, nice products, relevant, but that's not going to be the power uh, throttle that's going to grow the business. I think what HP need, and what Meg Whitman needs to do with their team is saying, look, I need a breakout product. I need to have a relevant, uh, shiny pebble that people can see in the market. Uh, it's just that makes HP relevant. I think that's mobile. I think HP has to have some sort of device. They're in the supply chain business. It should be a no-brainer for them to pump out some sort of device. Look how fast Samsung got to the table uh, in Android. I think HP can do that. Um, and, and I think HP needs a new product. If you go back in time of HP, you look at the history. During the late 80s, they were in a declining mini computer business. It was the laser jet and the printing that broke them out into the computer products business. That, that product was a black swan. HP needs a black swan, Dave. They need something to come out of the woodwork of HP. They need a product that's going to be the, the flagship of the future HP. I think Meg Whitman has to get her arms around what that is from a holistic perspective that complements the existing portfolio of products. So one, a relevant product strategy. Two, making it real. So I think on the product side, uh, it's kind of like status quo right now. You can see them not rocking the boat on that. And, 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 and as we say in kind of the East Coast, the best move sometimes is no move. So I think HP really isn't making any moves right now. If you look at what they're doing, they're not making any power moves relative to the, to the products. They're just continuing point releases. They got some new stuff coming out. Obviously very compelling. We heard from about flex capacity with cloud. These aren't game changing products. These are incremental point releases to existing leverage of their product portfolio. To me, that's great, keep that going, but they got to move the ball down the field in a big way, and I think I have not yet seen that from HP, and I honestly have no idea what's going on with HP in this area. I've been scouring the landscape, trying to figure out what they're doing, and there's really, I can't see anything. Well, so I think, the, I think, in summary, the best move from HP right now that they're doing is not doing anything. Well, they're not I've, really doing anything. And we've talked on theCUBE, uh, I've asked the question a number of times, can HP get back to its roots? I, I asked this back in you know, 2010, 2011, when we were doing Discover in Vegas. Can HP get back to its roots of invent? Now it put Martin Fink in charge of HP Labs. Now Martin Fink's got a dual role. He's now also in charge of a cloud. If you look at HP's R&D on the, on the uh, I think John, you listened to the earnings call. Wall Street was given, a actually asking Meg about R&D spending. And, and Meg was, 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 it was nuanced, right? She was saying, look, we're, we're becoming more efficient on R&D spending. So R&D spending actually declined. Now, that is to me a concern, because under the herd era, he really cut R&D right to the bone. And as you well know, John, you can't just flick a switch and turn R&D back on. So HP's got to get back to its roots of invent. Uh, the fact that it's, it's lowering out now, uh, lowering R&D is a bit of a concern. Now, Meg's claiming that they're being more efficient on that, but they need to see some blockbusters coming out of HP Labs. They talk about store once, it, clearly it's not a market blockbuster. It's doing well, it's helping HP compete in the marketplace, but that's not a game changer in terms of, the, like you, you gave the printing analog. Uh, Express Query, actually very interesting technology that came out of there. Vertica is the other thing, John. Vertica is probably the most interesting acquisition that HP has made, in my opinion. Uh, it's really starting to pay dividends. Uh, that was a great acquisition. They picked it up for, I don't know, 300 plus million, 340 million, something around there. That uh, has allowed HP to develop the Haven platform and really participate as a, as a genuine player in the big data business. Kind of competing not only with, with EMC and Greenplum, but also leveraging a lot of the stuff that we talk about in, in Hadoop. So I think I really, really like that Vertica acquisition. I want to see more. Meg's got to get this company in a position where it can be, begin to acquire some of those more innovative companies 
and tuck them into HP. We were walking over here, John, and you made the statement, people don't realize how big HP is. I mean, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, Dave. I mean, first of all, I love HP. You know, you know, we're critical of HP in some areas. We're very complimentary in others. Uh, people who know me know, I, you know, sometimes can be harsh on HP because I'm rooting for HP. There are a lot of people that are rooting for HP because I'll tell you why. HP is a monster-sized company. They are not some small, you know, we're going to pivot. They're a huge company with big numbers. They are the, they are the aircraft carrier. It's throwing off a huge wake of, of value, uh, revenue, customer value, and it's hard to, to move on a dime. And you know, Meg Whitman is, has essentially uh, hasn't set the the, the 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 timeline short like in a turnaround. So the turnaround in her mind is really just kind of get the, get the ship vectoring in the right direction. That's my point about the product relevance and like she's doing with the financial engineering. So so they have huge customer base. HP is so relevant and so important because of the size, Dave. And I think they get a lot of people bashing them. I read a lot of bloggers and other reports. Oh, HP sucks, HP's this and that. The bottom line is, yeah, HP has been hurting. But since we've been here with Meg Whitman on board, I got to say, the energy of the company is significantly different. Okay, there are still naysayers about, about her leadership, okay, in the market. But I'll tell you right now, from reporting here in theCUBE, since the autonomy integration, there's been a positive vibe. They've kind of eaten that eating that bad food as they got a little stomach bug on the, on, the, on the autonomy. So that's kind of digesting through the HP system, right? So once that's gone, but the technology is being integrated. So, so to me, you're seeing two things. They got to they uh, digest autonomy, they've done that. They've got to get their pro the products relevant. If you look at the financial performance of earnings, the laser jet division is sequencing to more of a network play. Like that direction, that's positive. Now you're seeing cloud. We've talked to Sarkile, we've talked to the folks on the cloud side. Uh, the cloud is getting it. They're playing in OpenStack. I think they could be doing more in OpenStack. I think HP could be what IBM was for Linux and be that anchor tenant and make OpenStack very real. Uh, and you heard from uh, you know heard from Scott Weller, the GM of Technology Services, that you know it's Amazon-like cloud for the enterprise and what they're doing. So you know I think they're they are definitely moving in the right direction. I personally think the size of HP is a, a, a good thing, but also a bad thing. Doesn't give them the props that they get on the press. So I think you know overall it is moving in the right direction. I'm not seeing any negative signs on, on the direction, as we say, directionally correct. Uh, so that's, that's my take, what's your take? So I want to add to this discussion and talk about one of the acquisitions that HP did make. John, in 2010 we were at VMworld, you remember the bidding war that was going on between Dell and HP, and we of course accurately predicted, it was a pretty easy prediction that HP was going to win that. Even though HP had to pay 2.4, 2.5 billion dollars for 3PAR, that acquisition saved HP's storage butt, in my opinion. And, and more than that, it's been a, a home run for HP. So 3PAR has been consistently, for years it was growing at triple digits, it's still growing at, at very solid, you know, 60% plus growth rates. Um, and, and so 3PAR has been awesome. Now, autonomy, you mentioned autonomy, yeah. It's like a little stomach bug, but, but that is an asset. It's like a bad H burrito, as we say in yeah, California. That, that, that's, <laughs> but that's an asset that HP has to absolutely leverage. Their software business, is, it declined 9% in the quarter, and they said, well, that was okay. because it was a tough compare, because we had a big deal with GE, but if you, oh, G, uh, GM, rather, if you take GM out of it, it's still declining. Yeah. HP's software business has to grow. It's, 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 it's not right that HP's software business isn't growing. That is something that we're going to be yeah. talking about this week. I think, you know, I think Dave, everyone knows they overpaid for autonomy, but I just want to the end the segment saying this, is that you can walk into a room and know whether, if there's a good party or not. And I got to tell you, in covering HP for the past two years in depth since Meg's been on board and the prior regimes, it's not a bad party. You can smell success, you can smell relevance, you can smell and you can feel uh, the energy of the employees and the customers. Again, HP is, is a hard company to describe, um, but in terms of challenges, I think Microsoft has more challenges than HP, in my opinion. But that's a whole nother cube conversation, Dave. Um, you know, I got to tell you, you know, HP is in a good position. I think, uh, I think, you know, I like, I like the position. I like what they're doing. Uh, but again, I want to hear from the executives, what is the next black swan? I want to hear, where is HP going to be putting their growth, what's the growth driver for HP? Um, under the hood, they're looking good. I think they have a nice sustainable product set portfolio right now. But where's the breakout product? What is going to be the flagship signal from a product standpoint? And that's something that we'll be, we'll be watching in day in, day out here. Three live days of coverage. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.